Hello class, this is section 3.6 and we are going to continue with this transient and steady periodic solutions example. And we, before we left off in the last video, we already calculated our general solution, xt, and our steady periodic solution, xsp. So I will say something, one thing. Um, in the book, we are, you are asked to write this in the form cosine 4t minus alpha. And I am never going to require that for the homework or the test because it just involves really annoying trigonometry and I don't think it really advances your understanding of differential equations any. So this solution is going to be sufficient, one in that has in terms of cosine and sine. But we will say a few things about the the period and the frequency. So remember that the period is how long it takes for a function to go through one cycle. And a function goes through one cycle in 2 pi units of time because these are trig functions. So we have a 4t inside there. So calculate t period. To do this, we have to figure out the time when uh, t 4t equals 2 pi. This goes through this, through this equation, 4t equals 2 pi. So the period is just going to be t equals pi over 2. The frequency is just 1 over the period. So this f equals 1 over t equals 2 over pi. So that's your frequency for the steady periodic solution. It doesn't make sense to ask period or frequency for the transient solution. So anyway, let's uh, get started with that. So let's just box this away in one corner. So we have our initial conditions, x and x prime. So our first order of business is to calculate x prime. x prime is just going to be minus 2c1 e minus 2t minus c2 e minus t minus plus rather 4 170 sine 4t plus 12 over 595 cosine 40. What remains is to use our initial conditions. So we have x equals 169 over 170 when y, when t is 0. So let's use the first equation here. So x equals 169 over 170 when the right-hand side has t equals 0, and this is just going to be c1 plus c2 minus 1 over 170. That's our first equation. And the second equation gets us that x prime is 607 over 595 when the right-hand side is equal to minus 2c1 minus c2 plus 12 over 595. That's our second equation. So we have two equations and two unknowns, and hopefully this will be easy to solve. Let's call this equation 1, let's call this equation 2. All right, or rather let's write, rewrite things to make it a little bit easier. And this is equivalent to c1 plus c2 equals 1. And this is equivalent to minus 2c1 minus c2 equals 1. All right, and the most straightforward thing to do, I guess, is to add c1, the two equations. So 1 plus 2 gets us that minus c1 equals 2, or c1 equals minus 2, which is our first solution. And plugging that in to the first equation just gets us that minus 2 plus c2 equals 1, or c2 equals 3. And that is our solution for c1 and c2. And we can write down our general solution, our solution now as xt equals minus 2 e minus 2t 
plus 3e minus t plus whatever the steady periodic solution was. But the point here is that our transient solution is simply the part that will disappear when t heads to infinity. So remember, as t heads to infinity, this goes to 0, and this goes to 0. So our transient solution is the solution that goes to 0. This is just going to be minus 2e minus 2t plus 3e minus t. So that's it. Uh, transient solution general solution and steady periodic solution. We've calculated all three.